Hey, this is Professor Homa. Welcome to WD06, creating a calendar from a table. I'm looking at the finished product right now in Adobe Acrobat Reader. And if looking at this, you can see it's the month of March, the current month of March. And there's, uh, looking at this table we have here, if you count down, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows going down. Those are the rows going down. And across, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns going across. So there's eight rows and there's seven columns. Notice that this top row up here has been merged so that there's only one column, but there was originally seven, but they were merged together. So that's what we're going to do in Word. We're going to build this out of a table. We are going to type everything into it. So I may, as I record this, I may stop and finish typing things into it. So you don't have any file to start with. You're just going to be making this from scratch. So I'm going to go into uh, Word. I'm going to launch Word. And I'll do that right now. And there's my Word file. Now, before you do anything, this is important. Um, you know, step one is create a new work, Word document, which I did. Step two is two things. One, you make it landscape. So under Page Layout, make sure that you go to Orientation and click on here. Make sure you make it landscape. Landscape so that it's 11 wide and 8.5 high. Because we're going to do this so that it's wider than it is high, just like a calendar. So um, that's the first thing that you have to do is make it landscape orientation. The second thing that you want to check, um, and you can do this by going to the Home tab and going to Paragraph Dialog Box Launcher. Most new Word documents have a space after setting of 10 by default. So if you ever you know hit Return, there's always going to be extra space after. So I'm going to turn that down to zero right now. Not even auto. I'm just going to put it down to zero and hit OK. So make sure you do that or else you're going to have some extra space that you may not want in your document. So that's very important in step two that you do that. Also, step three is margins. That's also, I could go back to page layout and I could go to margins and just make sure that it's one inch all around is fine. Okay, and I'm moving on to step four, which is insert a new table. To do that, I'm going to use the insert tab. And here they have table right over here. So I'm just going to insert table down here. You can see all these little boxes, but there's insert table. And just like we said, on our sample, we have seven columns. Those are the ones going across, and we have eight rows. Okay, so it's going to be seven columns, eight rows. And you could just leave everything fixed column width for now, and I'm going to hit OK. And there's our table. That's what it's going to look like to start. It has kind of a default setting for basically 12-point text that's inside it right now. So that's number four on our steps. Now, number five, what we're going to do on here is highlight these first two rows. And you could notice you could go outside the table to do this. You don't have to be in here. You could go outside and highlight two rows. You can see mine are highlighted with black right now. And what we're going to do up here is we're going to change the height of these. And to do that, I'm going to go up here to my table tools, and I'm going to go to layout. And for layout, there's a place for height. And it's saying 0.19 right now. I'm going to click up here and make it 0.3. And it only took one click before it jumped up to 0.3. So that's all I wanted to do for number five. So we're already a third of the way through this. Okay, now with these rows still highlighted, I'm going to move on to number six. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to center these both um, vertically and horizontally. That means all the content that's going to be inside there. For example, right now, if I just put some content in here, like if this was Sunday, you know, you could see it's going to be justified on the left side, but we actually want that so it's going to be centered up and down and right and left. So I'm going to highlight these two rows. Like I said, keep them highlighted. And I'm going to go over here, and this middle button will center up and down and right and left. You can see there's different settings here. They, they have the vertical and the horizontal setting. So if you do a line center, it's going to do both ways. It's going to center up and down and right and left. So that's what I'm doing there, and you can see it move the Sunday over there. Okay, so that's number six, and that's all I have to do right there. And then the top row, I'm going to merge all the cells here. Now, if I highlight this top row, you can see while in Table Tools layout, there's still a button here for Merge Cells. So I'm just going to click that. And you get to see it merges it all together so that if I just put one title in here, which I'm going to put in March 213, or March 20, 2013, that'll be centered up there. So it'll center up and down and right and left. Okay, and that was actually step eight, typing these words in here. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is make this 
this top text here, 18 point. I'm going to go back to the Home tab and make it 18 point. I'm also going to make it Arial Black. So I'm going to look for Arial Black, and it's that's Arial Black. You can see it's very bold. Okay, so that's number eight. Number nine, I'm going to highlight the bottom six rows. Okay, not, not this one here. So I'm going to go down to these. I'm going to leave the one with the, that's going to have our, our days, but the ones with actually the numbers, and I'm going to highlight these rows. And I'm also going to change the height, and I'll go to Table Tools, Layout. Okay, and there you can see height. I'm going to take it up to 0.8. Okay, so I'll leave it at point eight, and that's where our, you know, all our dates are going to be in here. Notice it has the seven columns, and the the six rows, and th this again is where our our days of the week are going to be. So that's number nine was actually changing the height of those cells or those rows. Okay, also what I'm going to do, and, and this is just planning ahead, but all the type that we put in here is going to be twelve point aerial black. Um, just like the other one was was 18 point, this is going to be 12 point. So everything that we put in here is going to be Arial Black. It's going to be nice and bold. So I'm going to go in here and choose Arial Black again. Even though we don't even have type in a lot of those, at least when we type it, it's going to be that. And make sure it's 12 point. And you can see Sunday goes into that um, that formatting. Okay, so that that moves us on to number 11, which we're going to enter the days Sunday through Saturday. So I'm going to pause here while I type them in. So I would start with Monday and go across. So I'm going to pause here. You don't have to watch me typing it. And I'm going to finish off that row. Okay, I just finished typing in the days there. And you can see they're all centered up and down and right and left. The next thing I'm going to do is put in all the dates. And I'll also pause when I do this too. But just to, just to note that for, for this year, uh, Friday is the first. Saturday is the second. And when you do this, you can actually type and hit your tab key to move across. So it won't take that long when you do it. You're just typing in numbers. And I'm going to pause here, and I'll finish this up as well. OK, I just finished up typing in all the numbers, and I hit Tab to move across. So there they all are. If you're wondering what these things are, they're just the invisibles. You could turn them off if you don't want to see them. Those are just a little um, character that's inside the table cell, indicating where the text would go. So basically, we have kind of a black and white calendar here, and we're going to start filling it with color. And I'm going to just start a little bit, and then I'll take a break, and then I'll do a part two video for, for the rest of this, just to, to break it up a little bit. But the first thing I'm going to do here is just to add some color, just to show where to do this. And I have to look at the sample, so let me just jump back to the sample. You can see it's kind of a light green, it's dark green, and then it's going to kind of alternate light green again for three um, three rows I guess. So I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to Word and I'm going to make this light green and to do that when I highlight in here I could go back to Table Tools Design and this shading thing with the bucket is actually where I want to do this. So Table Tools Design and go to Shading and have that row highlighted and I'm going to go in here and just choose, I'll just choose uh, this third one down. I'm not that concerned about which green you use just as long as you're consistent. So I'm going to make that kind of that light green and then this one here, I'm going to highlight this row, and I'll use that same shading, and I'll make everything like a dark green. And you can see when I do that, it makes these uh, days of the week hard to read. So I can also go through here and highlight this row again, and this time I'll go back to the Home tab and use my text selector to actually make the font color white. So there'll be kind of greater contrast, and they'll kind of stand out a little bit better. So if I click off of here, that's what they should look like. I think I did that. Let me make sure I did that. White. Okay. All right, so there, there's my white highlighting here. And I'm going to finish up doing the rest of the rows and do some things with the border color and also throwing in clip art.